Hey everybody, it's Jay Bear from Convince and Convert, and I'm joined today by a very special guest, Mr. Arnie Ken from Vertical Measures, who is also the author of the fantastic new book. It looks exactly like this. It is called Accelerate, Move Your Business Forward Through the Convergence of Search, Social, and Content Marketing. Arnie, thanks for joining me. How are you? I'm doing great. I think we should end right there. That's it. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. Thank you. Drive safely. <laughs> How's the book doing? Uh, I think it's doing pretty well. Uh, we came out of the gate uh, with a pretty big promotion and uh, managed to get ranked uh, number one in our category the first week. Uh, it's dipped a little bit since then, which is expected, but uh, we're out promoting it. I'm out speaking, and uh, I'm sure the sales will stay smooth. Fantastic. Well, congratulations. I know that it's not an easy, uh, an easy task putting it together, and marketing's not easy, so good for you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I know you know it full well. I do. So, so the book is is interesting because it, it actually it really is the, one of the first books that that really talks very specifically about sort of the holy trinity of search and and content and social and, and how they really work together. Right? It's it's a three legged stool. You can't really work um, w without all of them. Um, tell me about that a little bit and, and sort of how you got to that point. Well. Um yeah, it's probably a long, too long a story for this interview, how I got to it. But, but basically, you know, I think it's uh, the evolution of our company, Vertical Measures. Uh, uh, we used to be primarily an SEO link building company and found that uh, it was pretty hard for us to do SEO and link building for sites that had really bad content, uh, generic content and so on. Uh, so we ended up writing and creating a lot of content for our clients. And just one thing led to another. And, of course, you know, Facebook exploded a couple of years ago and Twitter and now Google+. Plus and it's gotten much easier to promote the content and use social media. Uh, so we were talking around here over the last year or so, and, and just kind of the phrase, the convergence of search, social, and content marketing came together. And uh, somebody here, I'll give a shout out to Patty Adams, uh, suggested I work on a book uh, about all of that. And uh, I said, no, can't, can't possibly do <laughs> I was going to say, to say you, still, you still like her after she suggested you to write a book? That's impressive. Right, exactly. <laughs> she still works here. But uh, anyway, and a year later, uh, we have a book. So. Good for you. That's fantastic. One of the things that I really appreciate about your book is that um, – you're, you're very upfront about the, the notion that while companies need to create content, it can't only be about themselves, right? You can't just talk about your company and what you're doing over and over because you're only so interesting, right? There's a limit to, to what people will, will, uh, will support. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the line I use a lot is, uh, uh, you know, it's not about you. It, it's the vendor, you know, it's the company. It's not about you. It's about your customer, and I think uh, when I'm out speaking, what I try to uh, remind people of is to think about when they're online, when they're on Google, Facebook, whatever the platform is, and they're out searching for information, uh, how are they searching? What are they looking for? And it's generally not to find out what company has won the most awards or has the most employees, but it's you're trying to find solutions to your problems. You're trying to find information, things that are going to help you decide to you know, make that purchase or investigate uh, whatever service a little bit further. And that's what I think uh, people need to keep in mind when they're creating the content is, is you know, keep that searcher in mind, not, not the, the, you know, the, all the hardware a company might have won. You know, when we talk about content, I think most people naturally go to the place of a, a written web page, right? I think most people think about that as, as content uh, in our world. But there's a lot of other places within your website that you can make a difference in terms of what you say and how you say it. One of the great examples that you use in the book is on e-commerce pages, that you can have a, a regular, you know, here's a product profile page, a product detail page, or you can really use that as an opportunity to tell a story. And I think Zappos is one of the examples that you use in the book. Right. Yep. Yeah, I think Zappos, uh, REI, uh, Amazon, of course, are, are some really good examples. I realize they're, they're big, big companies, and uh, people naturally assume they have the resources to do this. But I feel like if, if, you know, if you're in e-commerce, and whether you have 100 products to sell or 10,000 products to sell, you do need to set aside and, and maybe just have to put it into a calendar or whatever and, and tackle what you can tackle. If you can tackle 10 product pages a month and really improve them, by maybe adding user-generated content, you know, in the form of reviews or comments or feedback, uh, video if you could, a how-to video, how to install this or how to size this or or whatever. But whatever you can do 
to, uh, again, help your customer, your potential customer, uh, feel very comfortable with, with making this purchase. I think that's what you should focus on. Uh, you know, what, what I see it happen a lot, and we've all seen this, is where, uh, you know, maybe you're representing somebody else's product, and they give you a, a data feed, and you just implement that data feed like a thousand other sites did. Yeah. You really gain no advantage. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you mentioned video in that answer as well. I'm a big believer in, in video content, obviously. Cool. Right. Um, <laughs> Uh, and I think you are as well, right? You, you counsel your clients at Vertical Measures to, to create video content, and, and I think you make some video content for your clients. Uh, do, do you think that makes a lot of sense for most companies and, and will continue to be a, a good tactic? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, and uh, it's going to sound silly to say I really you know, believe in content for search, and uh, this is the year of content, or this is the year of video. Right? It's always the year of video. They always say that. And mobile. It's always the year of video and the year of mobile. Yeah, exactly. Right. Always. <laughs> Uh, but I, I and I don't remember where I, I saw this. Uh, it was uh, within the last few weeks. You know how it is—you see bits and pieces everywhere. But I did confirm this when I was actually speaking the other day in San Diego. Somebody else saw the same data that a uh, video. So theoretically, if a video is optimized and done well uh, compared to any other piece of content, the odds of it showing up in the Google search results are 53 times greater than than another piece of content. So. That sounds something really, really powerful right there. You know, it, it may be the, the year of the video or the year of mobile, but it seems like it's also the year or the couple of years of, of infographics, right? I mean, everybody got to themselves an infographic all of a sudden. Like, right. I don't remember infographics being this crazy, um, uh, you know, a while back. And uh, it, mu- I mean, you guys do a lot of search optimization. It must work, right? Or people wouldn't be doing it. Well, it's, it, it does work. Uh, you know, I think uh, people like, similar to the reasons they like video, infographics a nice, uh, relatively short piece of content. Sometimes they get pretty pretty large. But a nice snapshot and a nice, easy way to digest content. Uh, so, therefore, they gather links, which is, you know, pretty important for SEO, and, and uh, the content gets spread. So, sometimes it can be a pretty good viral thing. I will say, in my, this is just strictly my opinion, I think it's getting a little bit uh, oversaturated, just like everything. You know, we tend to exploit things as internet marketers that, that seem to be working well. Our last year to this year, uh, us placing infographic content has gotten a lot more difficult than uh, uh, from last year to this year. So I think that would be a sign it's getting a little bit oversaturated. But it's still, if it's done well, it can still be really, really good content. Fantastic. Yeah, some of them. I feel like, you know, yeah, it's a graphic, but it's not necessarily info, right? I mean, right. That, that just gets a little bit, you know, doesn't really convey that much. And, and right. so it's just a little bit lame. And, and obviously there are other design considerations as well. Sometimes they're really, you know, artfully done and really pretty and cool. And other times it's it's not as good. Uh, and that's, I guess, like anything else, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, if you create a good piece that, that doesn't have those two detractors, then uh, hopefully it'll engage and, and work for people. If it doesn't have data, like you mentioned, or any info in the graphic, then it's probably not going to work. You talked about infographics being uh, somewhat easier, at least in the last couple of years, to get people to link to. Um, one of the things I love about your book um, is is this notion of link attraction versus link building. Uh, can you talk about the differences there and why they're important for companies? Yeah, and that's actually been quite an evolution uh, at Vertical Measures. As I mentioned uh, earlier, you know, our, our roots pretty much are a link building SEO company. And you know, five six years ago, link building was much much easier than it is today. And you know, we could reach out and just talk to people about maybe not necessarily link exchanges, but you know, here's a you know a, an interesting site, and I see you link to others, or maybe you link to this one, and you know, we could get yeses uh, pretty pretty frequently. Or where there's other ways to go out and get links. Uh, today it's much, much more, much more difficult. Web, webmasters, website owners are much more savvy. They understand the value of links, and so uh, you know we've been kind of on this theme for the last you know eighteen months, two years, and trying to get our clients to understand it's really about link attraction, um, and, and the whole idea of link attraction. Like we talked about with infographics, uh, videos, top ten lists still work really, really well. But producing something, taking the time, not just throwing something out there to throw something out there, but is taking the time to produce a really nice piece of content that people will want to link to uh, as a part of their whole editorial process on their end. And in that case, do you actually approach sites and say, mm, will you link to this infographic or this piece of content, or, or do those links just occur naturally through social? 
Well, uh, both. Um, you know, it depends on our client and how difficult uh, or competitive that you know uh, keyword phrase or marketplace might be. Some do hire us, or we go out and we're contacting uh, websites based on our research and pointing out this piece of content and hoping they'll link to it. But the majority of what we're doing um, is more even traditional kind of press uh, mm-hmm. that you know used to do way back when when print and radio and all that was real popular. Yeah, letting the you know bloggers and, and, and press know about uh, maybe a really neat uh, piece of content. Uh, or, or certainly, we're using social media now that it's you know it wasn't really a, a tool to be used three years ago, yeah. but now there's whatever it is, 700, 800 Facebook users, and how many millions of Twitter users, and G, G plus, and all that. Uh, we're using those channels to let people know about uh, interesting content. It's funny, as you said, you know, social wasn't even a, a, an option back you know years ago when I started doing SEO and things like that. And now there's, in some ways, it's harder, and in some ways, it's easier. When, when you think about the holy trinity of search and social and content, what, what I find is that is that companies say, um, okay, I, I believe you. I believe you that these three things work together and that these three things are important. Tell me which of these things we should do first. Uh, what, what, how do you answer that question? Yeah, that, that's a good one. Uh, what the reality is, is probably everybody's jumped into social first. Uh, but uh, if I because it's fun, it's so fun. It's, it's fun and it's easy, and you know, and, and Twitter's that way free. Really it's all free. Social media is free, right? Twitter's right. free. Facebook's free. It's all free. Right. But if, you know, if I had my brothers and totally clean slate, I would say you've got to get your content squared away yeah. first. You know, even if it means you know uh, creating three, four, five, ten really rock solid pages, you know, rock solid pieces of content on your site, so that you have something to go out and promote and direct people towards. That's what I would do. Now, you know, there, I suppose there's a case to be made for you. You've got to start engaging and building followers and all that. And I think that's true. You know, I think that uh, uh, in social media, what you do want to be doing is providing good advice. And, and, and a lot of times, you're, I, you know, I refer people out to other websites all the time, like, you know, Twitter feeds and yeah. Facebook feeds. And I just think eventually what goes around comes around. But eventually you do have to have something, you know, pretty rock solid on your end uh, uh, to direct people towards how do you know if, if this kind of stuff is working, right? I mean, there's a lot of, uh, I don't know about black box, but, but there's a lot of stuff that, that you do in your business that, that I do in my business that other people do in the, in the search social content um, triangle where, where they're not really sure what it is that, that's going on. How do, you, how do you measure that? How do you put a report in front of a client that says, look, um, this is effective? Yeah, that's tough. I mean, and, uh, you know, the old uh, spin around or whatever what. I know half my marketing is working. I just don't know which half, right? right. Uh, and I think it's kind of coming back. You know, yeah. you know, with paperclip, you can measure things pretty precisely in, in other forms of online uh, media. Social media is uh, pretty difficult. Um, you know, SEO is, is, can be difficult. But ultimately, what we do talk to our clients about is what is it that they want to measure? Uh, you know, do they want to measure their rankings, which glad, or, you know, ho- uh, hopefully less and less clients are interested in rankings and they're more interested in traffic. And then hopefully quality traffic that's converting, and whatever conversion might be, you know, it might be a completed lead form, it might be the sale of a product or uh, signing up for a service or whatever it might be. And so we do coach clients on setting up analytics with their goals, and then as often as possible, and you can't always do this, um, you know, track it right back to the, to the source. So was it did it actually? You know, was the first entry into your site because they followed a Facebook link? You know, in, you know, in your site or a Twitter link or, or yeah. whatever, and, and do the best you can at tracking where these conversions came from. Uh, I, I, but I do understand, and I know that, for instance, at Vertical Measures, and we've done a pretty good job of branding the company over the last few years, and when I'm out speaking, which is a whole different kind of social media, uh, or we put things out on the net, we can tell that searches for our brand name go up. So we're not going to always be able to track and say, well, this was right. because we did a really good job here. We just know our traffic increased and that there was brand awareness, and, and, and those turned into conversions. Uh, so it's not, not a pure science, but, but I think you can track it. Yeah, and, and certainly search uh, in particular it gets credit for a lot of conversions that maybe had other contributing factors, right? It's that concept of last, exactly. last click astri- attribution, right, where, where right. search gets um, you know, patted on the back because somebody used Google right before they converted, but there may have been a whole other relationship developed with search, with social, with your content before that last uh, that last click occurred, and, and obviously there's a lot of smart people 
with some different attribution models to try and even out that playing field a little bit. But it's funny what you said about search volume for your brand name going up as, as your public profile you know, it grows in the book and those kind of things. It, it's like what uh, Group M search um, you know, proved with their study uh, a year or two ago, right? That, that people who are exposed to a company in social are 2.8 times more likely to search for that company down the road. And it makes perfect sense, right? You you well, you sort of build that relationship um, in social media or, or with content, and then when it's time to actually close the deal, you're like, I don't remember what was their domain name again. I don't know. It's it was something whatever, something measures, right? And you type it in, and and boom, and you find it. And then of course everybody says, Oh, Google's amazing. Um, but but there were some <laughs> other, there were some other things that happened uh, before that, and, and I'm glad that those guys were able to to model that in that study. I'll, I'll put a link to that in the. Uh, in the post, but it's yeah. it, it really is right. It, it all works together, and, and it, it drives me crazy when people say, you know, search or social, or content or social, or content or search, and, and it really is a three legged stool. Right, and I'll give you another example. Uh, I was I mentioned I was speaking in uh, San Diego a couple of days ago, and uh, Joel Book, who uh, you know lives in your neck of the woods, yes, uh, good friend, right, uh, at Exact Target, uh, he was giving a presentation. And afterwards, I went up and said hello to him, and he goes, "Hey, Arnie, I, how, how's the book doing? I hear you had you know your books out." And I didn't email him. I you know I don't really know how he knows, but somehow, hey, you bald guys are like you know, yeah, exactly. it's like there's like a brotherhood <laughs> Just, there. There's a brotherhood. <laughs> you him, right? Uh, you know, the guy. <laughs> Funny. Uh, start, start but anyway, down. like I say, I couldn't, I couldn't track that down. I mean, how would I know how he knew about it? Right, you know? right. It's a small world out there. Yep. Well, the book is amazing. One of the things I love about it is it's very tactical, very practical, very you know, do this and then do this. It's not kind of up in the up in the air. And I think if you have an interest in this topic, and you should, uh, regardless of the size of your company, it's it's a book that you will keep on your desk and you'll have all kinds of flags in it like I do here uh, to refer back to because I learned a lot myself. It is Accelerate from the Man, from Phoenix AZ, Arnie Ken from Vertical Measures. Thanks very much for writing the book, first of all, because it's a real service to people, and, uh, and thanks for being here. Well, thanks, Jay. I really appreciate it. Thanks for all your time. My pleasure. Take care.